so <laughs> earlier on you saw our jogger who was uh, collapsed in the garden. Uh, so the first thing I did when I saw him, which wasn't so obvious uh, from the video clip, was to make sure that the situation was safe for me to approach. So we're talking about checking for danger. And when you check for danger, think of danger as three S's, uh, sight, sound and smell. So anything you can see, anything you can hear, and anything that you smell that might pose a danger to you or the casualty. So I assumed at that scenario that the, there were no dangers to me. So the next bit I did was had to check for response. And you check for response by shouting at the person and gently shaking the shoulders. So as I approached the casualty, I was calling out to him, doesn't matter what I say, hello, can you hear me? Open your eyes, what's happened? I tried to get some response to my voice. I didn't get any response to my voice. So the next thing I did was gently rocked his shoulders just to induce a slight painful response. I had no response to that either. So if you get no response to shaking, no response to your voice, then we say that that person's unresponsive or unconscious. If you're on your own at that point, you then need to shout out help as loud as you can because you're going to need someone to come along and help you deal with that situation. Whether or not your helper arrives doesn't matter. You go on to the next part to the uh, primary survey, which is opening the airway. So to open the airway, you need to put one hand on the person's forehead, two fingers under the point of the chin, and do what's called a head tilt and chin lift. So push down on the forehead, lift the chin up, and that action of the head tilt and chin lift brings the tongue off the back of the throat and opens the airway. As we do that, you just want to have a quick look inside the mouth as you bring the head back, just to see if there's any obvious obstruction. If you see something in the airway, take it out. If you don't see anything, don't poke around looking for it like we used to do in days gone by. So no fingers in the person's mouth unless you see something obvious. That's the airway open. The next thing we need to do is determine whether the person's breathing or not. And we do that by look, listen and feel. So I put my ear down to the person's mouth and nose. And as I do that, I can look along the chest line to see if the chest is moving or sometimes we see the tummy move, I can feel the breath against my cheek and I can hear it because normal breathing is just audible. So the breathing check is look, listen and feel. And that look, listen and feel is for normal, quiet breathing. So if the person isn't breathing at all, or if the person's just taking the odd, um, irregular, occasional gasp, that tells me that the person's heart has stopped. That tells me it's cardiac arrest that tells me that I need to do chest compressions. At this point, if I'm on my own, I have to leave and make the 999 call and then come back and start doing chest compressions. If my helper arrived when I called for help, I get my helper to do that and I say to that helper, come back and tell me when you've made the 999 call just to make sure that happens because some people, for some reason, don't make the 999 call they say they're going to. Better still, if I've got a mobile phone, I can dial 999 or 112 put the phone on speaker, put it down by the person's head, and I don't have to leave the person and I can do chest compressions. Then as you saw on our jogger um, on the grass, I put the heel of my hand on the centre of the chest like so, ready to do chest compressions and ventilations. And that's the part I'm gonna demonstrate for you next. <laughs>